SPLA rejects the use of cluster bombs against the rebels group as alleged by the UN. And the Vice President eager leaves for Kajokeji to carry out national mobilization campaign there. In coming up, the Episcopal Church of the Sudan consecrates two bishops for London. Hello, good evening. You are watching the news coming to you live from South Sudan Television in Juba. My name is Aleandro Lotok, and now the full text of the bulletin. The youth wing of the ruling Sudan People's Liberation Movement, SPLM, has launched a nationwide massive peace mobilization drive to sensitize the citizens on the need to embrace peace and unity in, the, in diversity. The youth rally held in Juba was graced by the President of the Republic, General Salva Kirmayadid, who is also SPLM chairman and other senior party leaders. SPLM says it is upon the youth to create awareness amongst the population on the importance of peaceful coexistence. <laughs> United we stand, divided we fall, is a unanimous voice of South Sudanese on Saturday as thousands gathered at the Freedom Hall in the capital, Juba, to drum up massive support for peace and unity in a country known to be the world's most diverse nation. The massive peace rally was organized by the youth wing of the ruling Sudan People's Liberation Movement, SPLM, with a call to different communities in the motherland to stand up for peace and to build a more cohesive state. In his keynote address, the President of the Republic and SPLM Chairman, Comrade Salva Kirmayardit, urged the nation to pull together in a bid to build a harmonious society. President Kir appeals to the citizens to embrace peace and reconciliation and to denounce the culture of revenge, saying this derails the spirit of nation building. At the end of the day, with all the people that we have lost, And we want people to be one. And we want our nation to be one. What will happen? We will have to sit down and we say, let us forgive those who, who did this. And even those who killed people here. It will happen. It is not happening today, it will not happen tomorrow. But it will happen. If you want your mission to succeed, to build one nation with one people, that is the only way that it will succeed. Because there is no nation that can be composed of, of one ethnic group. Meanwhile, the Vice President of the Republic, James Waniiga, who also serves as SPLM Deputy Chairman, blasted the rebel leader, renegade Riak Machar, for causing atrocities in the country, saying Riak had failed the nation during his service as the vice president for nine years. Iga, however, expressed government commitment to bring the country back to its feet. <laughs> Central Equatorial Deputy Governor Manasse Lomole Waya commended the youth for their great role in restoring law and order in the country at the time when the country's integrity was threatened. We must stand together and uphold this nation and not allow opportunities to wreck it in your eyes and in the eyes of the people of the Republic of South Sudan. 
On his part, the chairman of SPLM Youth League, Hakol Paul Kordit, urged the party's leadership to meet the aspiration of the young people by giving them necessary support. Hakol say SPLM prides itself in championing multi-party democracy in the country, calling on the political parties to join hands in the promotion of peace. The same challenges. And I want to give a good example of the new generation in the party. The young people. We've got young people here, the generation of Jotcom. I know you are sitting there. The guys on the Facebook, the guys on the Twitter, the student league, the youth league, our members in secondary school and primary schools, this new generation will definitely need a new place within the SPLM. We as a party, as a party, we have to adjust to the needs and aspirations of the young people in the SPLM. They appreciate our history. The peace and unity mobilization campaign is said to be rolled into other states to sensitize the locals on the genesis of the current political crisis and to urge them to embrace unity in diversity. The vice president of the republic, James Wani Iga, and the accompanying delegation left Juba for Kajukeji this morning to enlighten the community there on the current political development. Iga is expected to encourage the locals there to respond positively to the mobilization drive. Iga is accompanied by Central Equatorial Deputy Governor Manase Lomole Waya and members of parliament representing Kajokeji. going there essentially uh, the farmers there have an exhibition day and they have given us special uh, invitation uh, that that is one but secondly we are also going to hit two birds in one store we are carrying out the cmc's uh, programs there uh, and that is uh, mobilization so we will have uh, meetings with the intellectuals we will have uh, rallies with the entire population and so on so this is essentially the program that we are going for. SPLA has rejected the accusations leveled against the army by the UN Mine Action, accusing the National Army for using cluster bombs during its operations against the rebels along Juba Bor Road. The Director for Information and Public Relations, Brigadier General Malang Ayuen, a jock invited the UN Mine Action to visit SPLA ordinary stores to check whether the SPLA has such bombs. Malak added that the government has enough men and permissible ammunition which can be used during their operations, describing the accusation as unfounded and aim at tarnishing the good name of the army. army SPLA would like to totally deny the accusation by the UN Mine Action Service that cluster bombs were used during its operation against the rebel along Juba Bor Road for the following reasons. Firstly, we do not have cluster bombs in our ordinance. We invited UN Mine Action Service to visit our ordinance stores. Secondly, we do not have the need to use cluster bombs since we have the necessary manpower and permissible ammunition which we use during our operations. Thirdly, we do not use it even when we were being attacked by Khartoum because we did not have it. Fourthly, the leadership of the government of the Republic of South Sudan in general and the SPLA in particular are very well aware of the legal and long-term effects of cluster bombs on civil population and the environment. As such, it is unthinkable for the SPLA and it is allied to use cluster bombs in friendly areas inhabited 
by our supporters. We call upon United Nations Mind Action Service, which disseminated such false allegations to produce any tangible evidence on the use of cluster bombs and any evidence linking the use of the cluster bombs to the SPLA and it is ally. Nevertheless, we cannot rule out that cluster bombs were used in the past because the area of Bor had seen intensive bombing during the civil war in which Sudan's Russian made Antonov drop different types of uh, bombs, including cluster bombs. Although we know for sure United Nations mission in South Sudan did not venture out of Bor Town since the fighting erupted. However, we are ready to go with the UN Mine Action Service to the same area where they got the remnants of cluster bombs for verification. The Archbishop of the Episcopal Church of the Sudan, the Most Right Reverend Dr. Daniel Dengbul, has consecrated two bishops for the Diocese of Lanya and Trekeka. The consecration service was held on Sunday at All Saints Cathedral in Juba. In his homely, Archbishop Daniel Dengbul called on South Sudanese to coexist peacefully as one people of one nation. Both Johnson Matu reports. The newly congregated Bishop of Tarkeka Diocese Repra and Paul Modipar Jala become the second after the retirement of Bishop Michael Lala, while the new Bishop of Lanya, Repra and Aliabo Laku become the third after the retirement of Bishop Peter Amade. In his consecration remark, the Episcopal Church of South Sudan and Sudan, High Bishop Daniel Dengbul, hatches the two new bishops to work as team in order to unite the people in their diocese and the entire country, adding that they must plan a spirit of healing, peace, and reconciliation. So, so almost no mandatory Jimulena. Can South Sudanese work together? Can we work together? Hal Munkin the Dower Nena Sawa? Hal Munkin at Dinova Sudan the Dower Mahabad? Hal Munkin Dinka the Dower Mahabaria? Hal Nuar the Dower Mahashuluk? Or Akaza? And then I end in a Talada will Arbao Sitin Gbila. Can this 64 tribe work together? This is a question need all of us to translate. Ana kule ombugun, siyasin bitana, maasa adunena. You know, if you want to... The new bishop of Lanya dies, reverend Aliaba, toward his cooperation and teamwork with the first pool in his diocese as well as other diocese in order to promote peace building. A lot of conflicts and uh, even ourselves, the Pojulu people, and um, first year I will look to see that I, I work for the unity of our unity and the peace of our people and also for a communal coexistence with the other diocese around us and uh, also other tribes. As you see, that place is a very big area and uh, many people even from uh, Tarakeka and uh, from even Bor and other places, they graze their animals there, uh, which cause a lot of uh, conflicts. But I think God will give us a chance to, 
to cooperate with uh, Bishop Paul uh, Modi of Terekeka and the, the Bishop of Ondruba to bring harmony and to our people and so that we can really develop. Terekeka dies is near Bishop Reverend Paul Modi Pajala expressed his readiness to work for the truth and unity, the peaceful for common goal. I'm very privileged to come to this ministry and as we have come in a crucial time, my concept, my work, should be to bring people together, to work together, to reveal our country, the Republic of South Sudan. The task of reconciliation and peace is paramount in my administration. After long await of the two dioceses of Tarkeka and Lanya, they today got their two bishops that will work with them. And in the consecration of the two bishops, the High Bishop of the Episcopal Church of South Sudan and Sudan, His Lordship Deng Bull said, you Christians should not lead God, you should supposed to be led by God and you go and do the word of God. Reporting for SSTB News, in all sense, Cathedral Church, Pope Johnson Matura Cage. We wish the two bishops nice uh, work as they go and begin the service of the Lord in their areas. And the National HIV and AIDS Commission has received 700,000 U.S. dollars from the regional grouping IGAD through its HIV and AIDS fighting wing, CEDA, Canada. Speaking to SSTV upon arrival at Juba International Airport from Addis Ababa, the head of the commission, Dr. Esterina Novello, said the fund is meant to fight HIV and AIDS in hot spot areas for the period of January to December 2014. Jackie Daru reports. The chairperson of South Sudan HIV AIDS Commission, Dr. Esterina Novello, returned to Juba after attending a meeting in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. The meeting was a response to an invitation of the IGAD countries to review programs of previous one year and make it compatible with other programs of fighting HIV and AIDS in the country. Speaking to SSTV upon arrival at Juba International Airport, Dr. Esterina says the commission received funds amounting to 700,000 US dollars from regional body IGAD through its HIV and AIDS fighting wings, CEDA and Canada. The issue of the funds which was uh, donated by CEDA and Canada to the IGAD member countries amounted to 8 million uh, US dollars and uh, because this money, the release of the money, it delayed and uh, most of the country have just received the money, uh, including South Sudan, uh, we receive it uh, this January and uh, actually that project is supposed to have ended uh, by December 2014. But again looking at the, the duration which is short, for the IGAT member countries to absorb this money, uh, we agreed that uh, uh, there will be an extension without cost so that to give us an ample time uh, to absorb the money than the funds to be returned to the donors. She said the fund is meant to fight HIV and AIDS in hot spot areas such as Kajokeji, Kaya, Iba, Nimule, Nashir and Maban respectively for the period of January to December 2014. She added that the host communities will benefit from the funds. So now uh, Kajokeji we had uh, some problems of, uh, of the budget uh, which was under UNSCR. Uh, but because of uh, overwhelming uh, 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 influx of refugees in the country, uh, the UNSCR uh, has opted to pull out from Kejukeji to concentrate on the northern part of South Sudan. And uh, it became a bit an issue for us. We are not happy because that uh, hotspot will run some crisis of funding. But uh, we discussed with them and we had agreed that, okay, the funds uh, should be released to the commission uh, to, to be the custodian so that at least uh, for sustainability of, uh, of service delivery to that area. Dr. Estarina said cancer in Igat region is ringing an alarming bell. We discuss uh, uh, over the issue of Center for Excellency for the Cancer's Disease uh, in the Igat region 
Uh, and of course, uh, this is not a new uh, proposal. It has been there uh, for the last two years and it was endorsed by the Interministerial Committee and uh, whereby the eager member countries has divided the cancer diseases by the countries. Of course, except South Sudan, uh, because we have not yet established any center for the cancers in this country. But of course, what we had agreed that uh, enormously, that uh, the, the Center for Excellency uh, will be established in uh, Addis Ababa. All hopes are high to see that HIV and AIDS in hotspot areas is a bridge. Jackie Daru, SSTV. And the governor of Western Bahari Al Ghazali State, Rizik Zakaria Hassan, has described security situation in his state as stable and that the population is enjoying adequate security and economic stability. Rizik was speaking to SSTV at Juba International Airport upon arrival from the state capital, Wow, on Sunday. He also added that the mobilization campaign for the recruitment of the citizens for the defense of the land is progressing well. Governor said his visit to the national capital, Juba, was to address issues related to the state developmental projects. <laughs> برضه فيها إحنا بنحاول ننور في جهة الاختصاص بكل التطورات الماشية في الولاية بصورة عامة الولاية كويسة بالخير ما في عوايا من ناحية الأمنية من ناحية الاجتماعية والاقتصادية في استقرار استقرار نسبي في الولاية والحمد لله يعني نحن بنحب إنه نفس المنوال يستمر لقدام الشيء الجديد طبعا يا أخوان نحن شغالين التعبية المبلازيشن التجنيد وهذه اللي قد استجابة كبيرة من المدن المواطنين واللجان اللي كبرناها برضه شغالة بجد عزيمة أضر وايس الأوضاع كلها مطمئنة وما في عوين إن شاء الله شكرا لكم South Sudan Breweries Limited, SSBL, the first national beverages company in the country, has joined hands with the Bureau of Religious Affairs and Faith-Based Organization Crisis Committee in the office of the president to work for peace and prosperity in the country. The courtesy of SSBL has donated an assortment of food items worth 100,000 100, South Sudanese pounds to the Bureau of Religious Affairs and Faith-Based Organizations to assist the survivors of the political unrest who are in various transit camps in Juba. The first quantity of food staff was transported to be distributed to the IDPs at El Mahad Primary School and those at Lologo transit camps. War is an enemy of peace, and so does hunger. It is these two sides of the same coin which the people of South Sudan wants to stamp out. Ruled by the virtue of patriotism, the courtesy of South Sudan Beverages Limited, SSBL, has joined hands with the Bureau of Religious Affairs and Faith-Based Organization Crisis Management to work hard for peace in the country. SSBL, as the first national beverage company, has marked a milestone in the history of the Republic of South Sudan by donating tons of assorted food items and some of money from its staff union to assist the internally displaced persons who are in the transit camps in Juba. The donation was handed over by the Human Resource Director for South Sudan Beverages Limited, Grace Okello, to the Director for the Bureau of Religious Affairs, Moses Stella Madut, at SSBL premises. In a statement to South Sudan Television, the Human Resource Director, Grace Okello, said the people of South Sudan should not only work for peace, but also fight hunger by contributing more food to the displaced population. Will you please accept to take these items from us? Will you ensure that as the Bureau of Religious Affairs in the office of the President and the Faith-Based Organizations Crisis Committee, will you please do us a favor and deliver these food items to the IDPs in Goliath and in uh, Hamarat and also in Lologo. 
and the Director of Religious Affairs, Moses Stella Madut, appreciated the material support from administration of SSBL to assist more than 900 IDPs in Juba. We have received this very wonderful gift faithfully as we are a people of faith such that we deliver this food as a start of peace and prosperity in our country. The first quantity of food staff was then delivered to the IDPs at El Mahad Primary School and Lelogo Transit Camps who came all the way from Jongle State two months earlier. He's speaking during the delivery of the items, Director Tela Madut said the number of the IDPs is alarming, which raises high demand for support. So, said the donation has come to the rescue of the IDPs as they were in desperate situation. <laughs> Wabuna, uh, welcome you. The IDPs express demands for emergency relief as they have stayed in the camps for over two months without support. For SSTV News in Juba, Eddie Ristiv. Over 140,000 internally displaced persons currently seeking refuge at the Warrior County of Lake State are in dire need of humanitarian assistance. The IDPs that cross from Jongle State counties of Greater Ball told their members of parliament who visited them on Saturday that they fear returning back to their homes as their shelters were looted and destroyed by Riak Machar's rebels. SSTV's James Arusi reports. A Warrior County of Lake State has been a safe heaven for over 147,000 people that fled the conflict in Jongle State after the 15th December attempted coup in Juba. Thousands managed to save their lives after crossing the Nile into Lake State. For that time, it was saving life first, but now how to keep life is the main challenge. Thousands are shelterless, sleeping under trees in a Warrior County that now raises alarm of hygiene and education. Rains are soon to cover the skies that leave the authorities here with a lot to beat time. The commissioner of Awerial County, Deng Tong, says what worries him more is the wet season. Although he has tried to involve all companies, construction companies and UN agencies to plan for long-term initiatives, but there is more needed for these people. Uh, the main needs we need to, to, reset, to resettle the IDPs. Now they are still sitting under the trees for the last two months. For us here at the county level, it is, it is not safe because any season is coming. We need to give them a higher ground, give them shelter, give them services. And also the most important part of it also is getting school for the children. Uh, some NGOs are here, like UNICEF, save the children are working on those plans. So those are the main issues that are now at our hands. The chairperson of war widows, disabled and orphans, Honorable Deng Dao, led the war community of MPs and government officials, appeals to the UN agencies to establish long-term plans to help citizens, mainly women and children, that are seeking safety in the county. Honorable Deng Dao, who listened to issues from community paramount chiefs from Bor, says he will appeal to the humanitarian committee led by Awud Deng to rescue the situation before the rains cover the present blue skies. They have raised uh, pertinent issues. Uh, women have talked about the issue of uh, health, the issue of water, and the issue of uh, shelter for the children. They are worried if the first rain comes, they will need to have a big problem. They have also expressed the issue of the school uh, for children. We definitely we have seen a very large number of children that we have seen today when we arrived uh, at the airstrip. Uh, the majority of 100, 147,000 
probably 60 percent are children that are here. So it's a big concern. The other concern is the question of shelter that we have seen, and we are very glad that the county authority have located 1.5 kilometers uh, for, uh, for our people. Uh, Water and security is no longer the problem, but shelter and education remains a major threat for the internally displaced people and also humanitarian agencies as well trying to help these people in this area. There are about uh, over 100,000 IDPs that drive across the river to Lake State Boreal County. Thousands of them are living without shelter, but sheltering themselves at night under trees where nets have been erected only to accommodate them when the darkness arrives. Thousands of them are now worrying the government authorities in Boreal County here. When the rain season starts, where will they move in without shelter? James Arusatana, SSTV in Boreal County of Lake State. And to football, where at Labara football team has been have been beaten 3-0 by Chelsea Ghana Football Club. The match was played in the Sudanese capital Khartoum this evening. This is the first time for football at, for the Atlabara to play in the African Champions League. It is noted that the team has been doing well throughout the competition. <laughs> اطلع بره طلع بنتيجه جيده وبنقول وانما بنقول ان هو كان محظوظ انه في 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 اتجاه اللي جات منه كان المهاجم مباشره ممكن يسدد داخل المرمى نعم الحارس ابعد الكوره على 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 الجانب يعني لو لاحظنا الابعاد كان على الجانب ما كان بيوسط المرمى لما يجي يسدد اللاعب اصبح بيسدد في زاويه ضيقه جدا مساحه ضيقه جدا نعم وبالتالي الحارس نفسه ركلات ترجيح ركلات حظ ركلات حظ نتمنى فيها التوفيق لفريق اطلع برا عوده سريعه للزملاء في الاستوديو التحليلي ويتقدم لتنفيذ الركله الترجيحيه الاولى لتشيلسي تشيلسي يبدا والصافرات والكوره مع الفريق الغاني يسجل الهدف الاول يسجل الهدف الأول في الركلة الترجيحية الأولى لمصلحة فريق بريكوم تشيلسي ليتقدم المدافع الأيسر اليساري ريتشارد ريتشارد الزبير سينفذ ركلة الترجيح الأولى الركلة الأولى لمصلحة أطلع برا بالتوفيق لريتشارد امام حارس المرمى ابو بكر اديسو امام ابو بكر اديسو well that was at labara and also melekia has been also doing well in the competition and we thank them for representing us in those african championship leagues well this is how we end this bulletin i am Ali.